Hello YouTube, uh, Sammy Technoid here, and today we're going to look at this piece of equipment that I've had in my arsenal for, oh, I don't know, maybe a year or two, and I never really hooked it up to anything, I just kind of had it sitting in a box. I intended to hook it up, but I, instead of using this one, I used uh, two of the other crossover networks that I got in my green screen man cave. But anyway, this is a, a an electronic crossover network that enables you to hook up multiple amplifiers to drive multiple arrays of speakers designated by the frequency response that they best perform at. And you know, you hook up the bass to a woofer, you hook up the mid-range to a mid-range driver, and you hook up the highs to a tweeter. And uh, this will allow, allow you to do that, enable you to do that, and pick out the frequencies that are most uh, best serviced by those drivers that you're using. So anyway, we're going to look at this, and uh, this is the box that it came in, and we're going to unbox it, okay? Now, as you can see, I've got the crossover unit out on the, the, the counter here, and it's still wrapped in its plastic. I haven't even unwrapped it yet it's still you know right brand new the tape is still on the plastic so I've got to take it out of the plastic and then we can take a better look at it and see all its magic and things it can do well now you can see that I've unwrapped the unit and we're looking at the face plate okay and it's got all the controls on it here and the controls are very important for a crossover network because it tells it how to do its job. Okay, so uh, you've got uh, two channels, channel one and channel two. Okay, and the, the controls are replicated on each channel when you're using it in stereo, but this can also be configured as a four-way monophonic crossover network. In the mono mode, you would need to have two of them for stereo. So yeah, this, this can be configured as a two-way, three-way stereo, or four-way monophonic electronic crossover network. But in my situation, I would only ever use it for stereo. So uh, yeah, and th those configurations are adjustable on the back panel, as I will show you. But anyway, to get into the controls here, you see we've got, uh, uh, there's a red designation and on top, and then there's a black designation below. And the red designation is for the mono operation. You see, it says there mono, and it's written in red, and then stereo is the, the green light, the mono is the little amber light. Okay, so first off, you've got a gain control, and then you've got a crossover frequency, then another crossover frequency, then a gain control for the low, a gain control for the low, mid, or mid, depending, and then a gain control for the high output. And those controls are replicated on the side two, or right channel, if you want to call it that. So anyway, that's the front panel, and this is one of those units that once it's plugged in, it's on all the time. There is no on-off switch. It's it's on as soon as you plug it in. Okay. And I was the the nice thing about this unit here. Pardon me. Is this? It takes a standard typical IEC connection, which means it's got its own power supply built in which is freaking awesome because that means you don't have to worry about losing some kind of little wall wart, you know. All you need to do if you lose the power cord is just go get another power cord. They're pretty standard, yeah. So anyway, I'm going to flip it around the back and we're going to take a look at what's going on back there. We're now looking at the back panel of the DBX234S and you can see it's got all the inputs and outputs and the selection buttons for making it do what it can do and you see here there's an input and then you've got a low mid times 10 button we're going to leave it at times one and you've got input for your lows or output i'm sorry output for your low uh yeah low sum that you uh hmm 
if you want to sum it, that one is where you get the sum from. And then there's mid, okay, and it says not used if you're using it for two-way. So there's two-way, because you see there's the designation there says stereo three-way, two-way, and not valid for the mono four-way. So you can have stereo two, three-way, two-way, or mono four-way. And how the words line up is what you're doing, okay? So how the words line up. And right now, I've got the buttons set so it's stereo three-way, okay? And the low frequency is normal, so the button is out. And this button is out, so it's low mid is times one. Then you've got all these outputs, okay? Low, mid, high. And then over here you have low, mid, high. Okay, and also the, again, for the second channel, you've got the uh, times one, times 10, and we're leaving it at times one. And uh, there again is the power cord input for the IEC standard. Now this is the, the back panel, okay? And there are two models of the 234. There's the S and the XS, and this is the S and it uses the TRS quarter inch jacks and the XS model is it's configured with XLR jacks which I didn't get that one I got the TRS and you say well have me tag my stereo doesn't have quarter inch it's all RCA well 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 what you do is you get these guys you know you get these guys quarter inch RCA adapter and that's what I'm going to be using I'm going to be using this okay so that's what I'm going to use I'm going to be putting in a quarter inch to RCA adapter and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run some music through this thing we're going to turn it on and I'm going to fiddle with the dials and you're going to hear how it changes the frequencies according to the, the how you set the dials in the front okay so we'll be back looking at the front here in a second now I've got the crossover set up to play some music and I'm showing the one side, the channel one, but I'm going to replicate the settings on channel two as well because I don't have a wide enough screen to view everything. But you see, we're what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be changing the low and the mid to high frequencies and you'll be able to hear the sound through the, the recording that I'll record it that uh, as I change the frequencies, the output of the sound will change and alter. And this is what the amplifiers would hear, uh, you know, the, uh, the bass amp, the mid-range amp, and the tweeter amp. That would, they would hear the frequencies that you're going to hear as I record them. So let me hit the record button on the recorder and start the music. You start the music now. Okay, well that was going through the, 
the uh, adjustments of the frequencies and what you heard is what the output would be to the mid-range amplifier if you had a mid-range amplifier well, in a three-way stereo setup which is what this is configured for right now and what I wanted to mention is what makes this crossover network so nice is that it uses the Linkwitz Riley curve for the crossover points. Now anybody who knows about crossovers knows that there's the Butterworth and the Linkwitz Riley. The Butterworth is a crossover point where the the, the points cross and they're on um, minus three decibels at the crossover point. Okay, the Linkwitz Riley is a minus six decibels at the crossover point. And what this translates to, I know it's a scientific mumbo jumbo, but uh, the Linkwitz Riley is better because when the minus six points converge, it makes it flat frequency response. The response is flat. But if you use the Butterworth, at the minus three points, it creates a three decibel bump. And that's not always good, you know, you gotta compensate for that three decibel bump. And what also makes this crossover so spectacular is the, the, the rate at which the crossover points uh, collapse. This one is 20, uh, 24 decibels per octave. 24 decibels per octave and that means that for every octave down from the crossover point it's 24 decibels below so anybody who knows music and sound knows that for every doubling of a frequency that's one octave so yeah if you've got 500 Hertz to a thousand Hertz that's one octave if you got 20 Hertz to 40 Hertz that's one octave. Anytime you double or have the frequencies, that's an octave. So if you've got a 24 decibel per octave drop, a slope in your, in your crossover, that means if it's crossed over at a thousand hertz, then 500 hertz is 24 decibels lower. And that's good, that's great, that is supreme. You want that, you want that kind of performance in your crossover network. And that's what they call fourth order, a fourth order crossover network. So anyway, just I just tried to give you some information, some knowledge, and an experience with a three-way crossover network here on my channel. And I hope you subscribe. I'd like you to subscribe. You know, I need some subscribers. Yeah, I, I would like to gain some more subscribers. So anyway, thank you for watching. And until next time, see you later.